Okay everyone, welcome to lesson two of grade two theory. So today what we're going to be doing is setting words to music. So if you've ever wondered how a song is ever written, um, in your piano lessons with me especially, we will be covering, if we haven't already, how to write the music part. But what we won't cover because of time restrictions that we do in theory is how to actually set words to music. So basically what we need to do is the first is follow a number of steps which are also in your uh, concept or cheat sheets but I'll go through that in a moment. We're going to start with this one particular verse. It's very short as you can see and it reads flocks of birds make a lovely sight. Now when I'm speaking I naturally have accents or strong parts that I'm um, making it more of it's in other words when my name I say my name for example Jane is just one syllable it's pretty easy Kai you and I have the most boring names on the planet sadly because we've only got the one sound however Vashko his name is interesting because we have a strong syllable on the first bit and a weak on the second and we say Vashko instead of Vashko Evangelina's is even better Okay, because we've got Evangelina. We got five syllables in a beautiful Greek fashion. So the options are Evangelina, 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 Evangelina. Right? You, so can you hear how I'm putting a different emphasis or accent on different parts of the words? So to know where that's happening, the first thing we have to do is break up each of these words into their syllables because there's more than one sound in each of those words. So that's what I've done in this first step here. Flocks of birds make a love and then a hyphen, li, sight. So lovely, which has two sounds, I've broken it up into two sections. And then I'm going to put an accent, which is this funny sideways V symbol, on top of each of the strong words. So the real question becomes, which of those are strong and which aren't, okay? So, flocks of birds make a lovely sight. When I read it out loud and I say it, in an Australian accent anyway, the strong parts come on those sounds. Flocks of birds make a lovely sight. But if I do it in another accent, flocks of birds make a lovely sight. I can actually change where it all comes in, depending on whether I'm channeling my inner Asian, my inner European, or my inner American, okay? I can actually play around with some of those accents. And the funny part about it is, if you were trying some of this with a Scottish accent, it's even heavier because in the Scottish um, sounds, all of the accents are really strong. Flocks of birds make a lovely sight. So you can't really tell, I know, isn't it cool? You can't really tell where the strong bits are. So if in doubt, channel your, channel your royal family and speak in the Queen's English. Flocks of birds make a lovely sight. So if we speak beautiful, clear English and enunciate, look at those smiles. <laughs> Do you get the idea? This is how we can um, feel where it sounds like. So once we've worked out where these accents are, and there will generally be four strong sections in these verses. What we then do is we put a bar line to the left of each of those accents, which means it'll look like this. And so the, we know that the first beat in every bar is the strong beat. Okay, and so the accent has to match up to the strong beats. And by putting a bar line in each of these spots, you can see that we're actually ending up with four bars. And that's exactly what we want. So our next step then is to be putting a note on top of each of those. So the question says, draw notes above each syllable using minims, crotchets or quavers and then add the time signature. So I'm just going to grab a couple of crotchets for a minute so that we can play around with this and I could show you exactly how it all fits together and we can work out, do this question together and see whether or not we get it right, okay? All right, so I need a crotchet for each of those sounds. Flocks of 
birds make a lovely sight. Now here's my problem straight away. You can see in the first bar I've got two beats. In the second bar I've got three. In the third bar I've got two. And in the fourth bar I've got one. Well that's going to be a bit annoying isn't it? So it's that's why we've got to use combinations of different things. So this one tells me if we only want one sound then either I've got to put in a crotchet rest in there or turn this into a minim. And in this case here, if I join those across the top and turn them into quavers, then I end up with two beats, which is why, whoops a daisy, sorry, I've got to go to the correct one. There are the two options of the answers that we want. So the top one that we just worked out was flocks of birds make a lovely sight, especially if I keep very even in time. And I'm adding two sounds. But the other thing that you can do is you can actually, if you make the first beat longer, then you can turn it into three, four time. Flocks of birds make a lovely sight. Either of those answers is correct. The trouble is that they're a little bit boring. So to make them a little bit more interesting, what we do is we add a dot after some of the notes, like this. So all I've done is I've added a dot in the first and the third bars in the first example, and I've just added one in the second bar of the second example. So here's what it sounds like. Flocks of birds make a lovely sight. Sounds a lot more interesting than flocks of birds make a lovely sight. Can you hear the difference? And then the three, four time, our original was flocks of birds make a lovely sight. This one is flocks of birds make a lovely sight. It just adds that tiny little bit of interest. So guess what? We're going on to question two. Open up your worksheets in lesson two, question two. And what I want you to do is follow those steps and you're going to actually write one of those, uh, add a rhythm to these words. So I'll help you through it and I'll talk you through it. But then I'm gonna get you to do each of them. So the best thing for you to do is to actually on a piece of paper, write out those words and put a hyphen in between William and digging. So see how William and digging have two letters? Put a hyphen in between each of them, which means when you write this, it'll look something like that. See how, see how I've divided William up? And I, where the double L is, I've put a hyphen in between. Because what that means is, eventually, we will add a crotchet. Does that make sense? Nod, yes, no? Okay, good. So go through and write out, stretch out, William is digging a bed of roses. What's wrong? Vashko? Unmute. Someone just left. Yeah, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Her internet froze. She'll be back. Thank you for letting me know, but I did notice. Okay, so once you've done that, put an accent on top of which syllables you think are the strong ones. And you should have four of them. Once you've done that, draw a bar line to the left of each of your accents. And then go ahead and fill in the rest of the bar with either crotchets or quavers. We're still working on question two, Evangelina. Our Wi-Fi is still Yes, <laughs> that's okay, sweetheart. Yeah, I know, it'll drop in and out. That'll be fine. Remember, I am videoing this and I'll upload the, the list to YouTube if you miss any bits, okay? 
All right, has everyone gotten at least that far? Accents and crotchet quavers and bar lines. Actually, Evangelina, if you turn your video off and just leave um, so I don't see you, that might help with the bandwidth. I think hers was frozen again. That's okay. All right, so what time is yours in Vashko? How many um, beats have you got in each bar? Just hold up your fingers. Two or three? Two. Good. Kai, how many have you got? Two. Brilliant. So yours should look something like this. William is dig William is digging a bed of roses. Or if you want to add it a little bit longer, William is digging a bed of roses. Either of those is correct or any combination of them. As long as the bar lines are the same and what's in the bar line adds up to three or two depending on your time signature. Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. All right, so that means your homework is to do the next two questions at home by yourself. And there are answers um, in the answer sheets for you to double check what you're doing. But this is really not that difficult. The secret is to say the words out loud. And where you naturally um, emphasize, listen to where you naturally emphasize those sounds, that's where the, um, the accent goes. Okay? All right, so let's keep going. We're going to go on to lesson three. But for the moment, I'm just going to stop the video, the recording, and restart it so that each of the lessons are separate.